G'day folks, uh, for this uh, episode I thought I'd uh, take you through how this particular bridge was built. I, I think I've uh, probably shown this in quite a few of my videos with trains going underneath it and all that sort of thing. But this was a scratch built bridge. Uh, the whole lot was scratch built. I mean you can go out and buy the girders but even the girders are made here at home. So I'll, I'll just uh, give you a bit of a look at it. And uh, and then we'll go through how it was done. It even has um, girders underneath it to uh, try and make it look authentic, at least. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll take it off, and then we can have a look at the underneath of it as well. It's uh, specially made for this location, and uh, so it's a removable bridge. So we'll just gently. Uh, Lift it out of its location there, and you can see that it's uh, got its girders underneath and everything, or RSJs or whatever you call them. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll take you through a bit of a, a slideshow on how it's done, and um, some um, snippets of an old gourmet shed that showed how. The, uh, the rivet detail was actually created. You can see the rivet detail there. Now this is simply a, uh, a gear wheel out of an analog clock, uh, a wind-up clock. And um, it's, it's handy because it's got this big hole in the middle um, and a shaft on the end here and uh, I've actually trimmed that shaft down a bit to suit uh, what I wanted to do but um, the teeth on this uh, thing are spaced at about one millimeter and uh, which you know in scale is about three inches so I thought that's that's pretty good so that's what I've gone with right um, the parts I've used is uh, this this piece here, which is uh, a bracket uh, for uh, that holds a um, a wheel for a sliding door fitting. So I've, I've uh, used that. I've cut it down a little bit, and uh, there's a piece of steel here. I, it already had a hole in it, so I just put a screw through the bracket, through to the steel, and that forms the handle. And then here, um, the uh, sliding door fitting has the hole there. It all, I'm using the screw that was in there as the axle for the, the gear wheel. So I'll just put it together and uh, give you a quick look. Okay, there we go. Uh, I've put the uh, screw through the hole, through the uh, shaft on the gear wheel, and this is a little uh, circular nut on the end. Uh, I've got a washer in between the gear wheel and this uh, bracket thing here, just so that the gear wheel doesn't rub on it. And that's it. It's as simple as that. You can make uh, your own version of this. It's all about just getting an axle and, and the gear wheel. The rest, you know, is pretty straightforward. Right, folks, the method is as, as simple as this. I uh, take a straight edge and lay it over the uh, aluminium foil in this case and uh, hold down very firmly and uh, also push down very firmly on the tool uh, vertically and you also need to keep uh, horizontal pressure against the straight edge so that you follow a straight line but it's as simple as placing the tool before the foil pushing down focusing on what you're doing here and then simply run the tool along once along the edge of the straight edge to the very end and there we have it one line of rivets now if I can get the shine off this uh, material you'll be able to see it it's very difficult there we are one line of rivets now obviously you've got to um, measure as you would with cutting paper or any material the exact position that you want the rivets in uh, and uh, once once you've done your line you can trim the other side to whatever uh, width you want but it's as, it's as simple as that and uh, it, it gives you a very accurate line as opposed to doing it by, um, by hand with a, a single pointy tool.
Right folks, as I said this bridge was made for this specific location and uh, you can see that it's it's on a curve and uh, which doesn't really affect the bridge in any way but the way that the um, uh, terrain moves away from the support there uh, means that this um, support that was fitted under here has got a different angle to this end here so it's all made to suit the terrain and um, so the way I designed the girder was to um, design it in my drawing program and I, you can see that I've put these dark lines on to indicate where the um, rivet detail will go with the ribs uh, that allows me to space them out evenly so I, I printed that out and then I stuck it onto some um, MDF and then I've cut them out so I've cut out two girders using that method and uh, it seems to have worked fairly well. So the road bed is made of ply and then I've got the ply supports underneath here and I've also got some girders underneath um, again made from ply and there'll be an overlay of thin card to make it look more like a girder when we get to that point. You can see the awkwardness of the, the situation there. And it also shows the ply. Uh, you can see it just, just there. Uh, that will be covered with a piece of uh, thin card. And uh, everything will be disguised. And uh, when it's eventually painted, it should look okay. Now this gives you an idea of um, how the ribs are made. We have the rivet detail on the uh, aluminium foil strip on each side here and then down the middle we've got this thin strip of card glued in there at a right angle to the girder and um, I haven't shown it here but I've, I've got just uh, flat strips of aluminium foil on the back matching the ones on the front uh, there will be no ribs on the back so because the ones on the back are flat, I did them first and then we lay the uh, girder on its back and then we do the ones with the ribs which are more awkward to do and more delicate as well. And what will happen is that once all the ribs are fitted, there'll be a strip of card that goes along the top edge of the uh, girder uh, which will protrude out past the sides or the edges of the uh, Girder and cover the uh, the ribs, so it'll look like one piece. So here we are. I've got um, the footpath going on now. There's only one footpath down one side of the bridge, so I'm gluing that in position. And uh, so I've laid the bridge along the edge of my desk there, and I've got some quick clamps to hold the footpath in position. And once that's in glued in position it'll sort of reinforce that uh, side girder as well so I can I can glue on two faces to hold that side girder in place that's the uh, the back of the girder or the inside face of the girder you can see how it's just flat there uh, to to match the um, rivet detail on the opposite side And, you know, testing as always, put it back in place to make sure everything's good. Um, we've got all the ribs on this particular girder. And so that still remains to be uh, finished off properly. But then we try things for size and everything, just make sure everything's working okay. You can see how the, the bare edge on the top of the girder and the ends doesn't really do it any favours. It really needs the capping. To sort of finish it off. So we try a little man. He's my little test man who's now glued down somewhere else. But just to uh, get an idea that we're on the right track for size and everything. And we try it with some vehicles to make sure the width is okay. Uh, yeah, so I've got a bus and a car on there, so that, that's fine. Plenty of room for those two. This is uh, several pictures here, testing, testing all the time. 
that gives you a bit of an idea of the scale of the thing. So I was I was happy with that, and um, so this girder gets glued on. I've got a piece of um, steel behind there, which is quite heavy and it's square, so. I can use that to sort of hold the thing in place and uh, just some uh, converted clothes pegs as clamps to hold it there until the glue goes off. That gives you an idea of the other side. So that would have been left for about 24 hours just to make sure everything goes off properly. And we want it to stay square. And then the other uh, girder was done, uh, same process. I probably got a bit better at it by this time. The um, the uh, foil strips were put on with super glue, as were the uh, the ribs as well. So you've got to get it right first time. That's why it's important to have those guidelines that were printed on there. You you don't get uh, two chances at this thing. You've got to do it right. And um, at this stage, I found that. Uh, I needed a bit more width so I've cut another strip of um, ply to put on here this this is this narrow strip here you can see it looks like there's two strips well there are two strips this one just packs it out a bit more and gives me a bit more width on the road and um, I've also gone ahead and painted the edge of this uh, footpath here a grey colour because there'll be some um, paving paper going on there and we don't want any sort of white pieces showing through at all. Now we've cut the uh, the strips to do the uh, the top and ends of the the girders so we've cut some thin card here and the thin card will go on to the top and ends of the girders and this one here is already done so it's only cereal box card folks that's just put on there glued on and then uh, we've got our uh, matching um, aluminium foil strips with the rivet detail to go on top of that again. So that will be glued on top of the grey card. So that's uh, waiting to be done there. And this is where it's starting to go on. Um, the... Uh, Aluminium foil is again stuck on with super glue, and uh, the pieces I had, <coughs> excuse me, weren't long enough to do a whole girder, so they they uh, join in the middle, and then I've got a cover plate to go over the top of the join as well. So we're getting there, and that one's done. They're both done, I think. There in that picture, maybe the other one is not done yet. And I've also added a strip of card over the um, edge of the, the bridge so you can't see the uh, the ply and um, there's another strip underneath this girder here just protruding slightly past the the edge of the girder so it uh, gives it that more authentic look and then the thing was sprayed uh, with a gray suitable gray color and uh, that's come up fairly well and then we needed to, to sort of dirty it up a bit as well but that's that's basically it and that's come along fairly well I think if I did it again I would probably just buy plastic girders and um, and modify them to suit the site however there was a certain sense of satisfaction in uh, creating that it is a one-off and now I've added a bit of um, soot and a bit of rust and all that sort of thing to give it that more worn look. And uh, now the paving's gone on. So um, that was just a, a download from somewhere. I don't think it was scale scenes, but I'm not sure now. Um, but anyway, I had this um, paving, which I used in the, the town area as well, and uh, just sort of sorted that out. And then not all that was left to be done then was the um, the roadway. So for the roadway, I just use wet and dry paper. And uh, before I fit it on to the uh, area where I want to put it, I, I distress it a bit by 
rubbing something over it or holding the paper at both ends and pulling it over an edge to sort of distress it slightly give it that worn look and you can see some evidence of that there so that's all uh, just done with PVA it's all stuck down with PVA and then um, I use a straight edge and uh, a white pencil actually to do the center lines down the road and probably a bit more distressing on the road surface itself and uh, and that's how it comes out so there we are folks that's the uh, bridge complete and that's how it looks from a distance and you'll notice that I've added little low brick walls at each end too to sort of finish it off and save anybody falling off the bridge down the embankment onto the railway tracks or oh, and to stop the sheep getting up there on the roadway I suppose and that's what it looks like from the railway and uh, an artistic little picture to finish off there folks so I hope you enjoyed that um, it's not a terribly difficult project but it does take a considerable amount of time to to get through it and that's the downside of that I mean if you just um, made the bridge with the uh, the ply base and use some plastic girders it would be a much easier uh, project to undertake uh, however it has got um, one-off uh, girders in this case. Okay, cheers, Gormo.